Good morning, everyone. I continue to talk on this text, opening the hand of thought. Uh, this morning, I'm going to talk on the one paragraph at in the bottom of page 134. <coughs> The flow of universal life is uh, stifled by an attitude that sets up this world as just a place to compete for survival, one in which people merely rise and fall. This attitude sees the law of survival of the fittest as absolute truth and within that framework manifest a spirit, uh, a spirit of comparing, rating and competing with others, kicking one another down the ladder winning and losing. It seems winners de degenerating in their own extravagance, extravagance and losers going from frustration to neurosis. People with such an attitude end up unable to make their own flower blossom. How can universal life bloom in this envi environment? <coughs> uh, in this paragraph, he, Uchiyamuro Oshi talks about the opposition of what he wrote in the uh, last two paragraphs. Last two paragraphs, he talks about uh, living with parental or nurturing mind by taking care of others to help others we bloom our own flowers and uh, each one of us in a sense what he said is bloom the flower of universal life universal life in japanese in uchiyamuro's uh, expression is jin isai mei. Jin is entire or whole, and Isai is all, and Seme is life. Uh, Dogen Zenji used this expression Jin Isai, and he said Jin Isai Jiko, the self, that is permeate or one together with all beings. But Uchamura put, uh, instead of Jiko, he put Seme, life. So in his idea, all beings are living within uh, this network of life, which includes everything. And in my expression, that is the entire network of interdependent origination. In, in that uh, you know, network, we can live, live or exist uh, with the support of all other beings. Therefore, we wish to support others, at least not to be harmful to others. And that is a basis of uh, no discrimination. That is big mind or magnanimous mind or mind without discrimination. And what he's talking here is uh, nurturing or parental mind, that is the attitude we try to take care of others. And what he said in last two paragraphs is, by taking care of others, we are, we are also, we take care of ourselves, or we are taken care of by others. So 
that is uh, last what I talked last week is uh, symbiosis that is uh, and I use because because of our translation mistake we translate lotus but that is not lotus but uh, uh, flower named uh, milk vetch that uh, is used uh, by Japanese farmers for uh, green manure and uh, you know that is one ex good example of uh, symbiotic relation that is this uh, plant has a bacteria that can what is the word uh, nitrogen fixation and uh, makes nitrogen usable form for this plant and nitrogen is one of the most important uh, nutrition uh, fertilizer for the plant and also this plant create carbohydrate using the sunlight and provide uh, carbohydrate to the bacteria. So these two uh, kind of a different living beings are uh, working together, helping each other. And that is uh, the model of, uh, you know, Bodhisattva practice or uh, nurturing mind. We nurture and help each other and bloom our own flowers. And what he is saying here uh, in this paragraph is opposition. <coughs> anyway, uh, last week when I give the talk, I only know, you know, this uh, symbiotic, symbiotic relation about this particular plant. But, uh, but I try to study a little more about the same biosis and I found that is only one of the uh, of other uh, kind of relations and I studied actually with Wikipedia <laughs> and I like Wikipedia because when I check one entry I can read almost the same explanation in both Japanese and English. So I don't need the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this is sin biosis uh, is from Greek, right? And sin mean together. And biosis is uh, to live or living. So symbiosis means living together. So in Japanese, this is translated as kyo sei. Kyo is together, and sei is to live or living. So very kind of a literal translation. And I found a diagram that uh, shows uh, one, uh, six types of these relations. Uh, bit, uh, symbiosis is about two different uh, uh, living beings or spaces. And it says space in this biogram, dia diagram says spaces A and spaces B and f and benefit benefit and it said neutral neutral and harm and harm 
Vater Ai talked last week is uh, A and B, in this case, the milk batch and the bacteria uh, help each other. So both has a benefit. And this is called mutualism. In Japanese, this is a so so rikyosei, living together, uh, benefiting each other. So both sides receive benefit within this uh, relation. And uh, the last one uh, is called competition. And middle one is called neutralism in EU. That means uh, neither benefit nor uh, harm. These are base, basic three. And there are two more like this. One uh, one side uh, has no benefit and no harm, but another side has uh, benefit. And this is, in Japanese, our, this is called commensalism. Uh, shall I write that spelling? I think you know. Commensalism in Japanese is henri. Henri kyosei. Hen means one side. So one side has benefit and another has, uh, has no benefit but no harm. And the fourth, fifth one is uh, like this and it is called amensalism. Amensalism in Japanese is hengai. For one side, there's neither benefit nor harm, but another side uh, has received harm, harmful. This, these are five, and the fifth one is uh, harm and benefit, and this is called uh, parasitism, parasitism. So, uh, you know, the relation between milk batch and the bacteria is only one aspect of these many different uh, relations. To me, this is kind of interesting. And one thing I don't understand is why competition is harmful for both sides. You know, when there is competition, winner receives the benefit and loser is harmed. Do you understand why competition are harmful for both sides in I mean, biology? Yeah, I mean, I think in, in this context, it's maybe a little different. Mm. But you, know, you can imagine it would be uh, like a fox and a coyote both uh -huh. competing for the same group of uh -huh. animals to eat. Uh -huh. <coughs> you know, by one eating one of those animals, uh -huh. they take one away from the other, but uh -huh. also from, and then if the other one does the same, uh -huh. it takes away from that one. So it's in that. Always the temperature at cost. Oh. Oh, I see. Anyway, you know, this is interesting to me because that is what I think Uchamoroshi is saying in this paragraph. Please. I'd just like to offer, expanding on that idea, mm -hmm. that I guess on a spiritual mm -hmm. basis, mm -hmm. competition and harm, mm -hmm. uh, competition in harm, mm -hmm from both sides uh, means one's a winner, one's a loser. Mm -hmm. But when one wins, mm -hmm. they try to maintain that status of winning. Mm -hmm. So they end up suffering from the... Uh, fear from for the, losing. Yes, yeah. fear of losing. Yeah. yeah. There you are. Okay. Anyway, to me, this... this 
Utsumoro is talking about the uh, uh, new new uh, mutualism uh, benefit each other. That is kind of a win-win relation, and uh, competition is what do you call it? lose 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 competition. <laughs> So uh, what Uchamuro is basically saying is uh, our Bodhisattva pra way, Bodhisattva path, is to uh, help each other and benefit each other, support each other. But opposition of this is competition that uh, harmful, according to Uchamuro, what he's saying here is harmful for both sides. Uh, it might be different meaning with uh, uh, meaning of both uh, uh, competition is harmful for both in biology. You know, the very beginning of this discussion uh, about what is the meaning or significance of Zazen practice or Buddha Dharma in modern society or modern civilization, which Amaro said in modern civilization, we are always uh, goal oriented. That means uh, we are here starting point and there is a goal we want to go. That means we don't like where we are. We have we cannot satisfy, we can't be satisfied who we are or where we are. And we think there are something, uh, somewhere we can go or we need to go to be happier or to make our situation better. Therefore, we make effort, work hard to reach the goal. And uh, Uchamaro said, didn't say this is uh, bad, but he, he said uh, this is one of the, this is based on, on one of the effort human beings have been doing since uh, we appeared in this, um, in this earth or planet to make our life and our situation better than we are. And they st we started to work hard. And he, he called this is a effort for development. But another fact he said is another side of human life is seeking, so this is seeking development. And another side is seeking peace of mind. And what he's saying, as far as we live in this way, there's no time we can find a peace of mind. Because when we uh, reach the goal, we f find another goal. So our goal becomes higher and higher. And there's no way we can f find peace of mind. Peace of mind means we are OK. This is fine. This is a uh, you know, good place. So we can just enjoy it. That is what peace of mind means. And uh, he, he said we human beings also making effort to find a peace of mind. And he said that uh, that is our religion is a result of uh, our human effort to find a peace of mind. So he said there are two, we, we have been making two kinds of effort to make our life better by, you know, investing a uh, better way of hunting or uh, uh, cultivating or farming to make our life easier and safer. And uh, we accomplish this modern civilization. 
but <coughs> as far as we are living within this way, there's no way we find a peace of mind. So uh, Uchamoros doesn't say this is bad and we should go this way. But he said, how can we uh, both find a both you know, development and peace of mind? You know, how can we make effort, work hard, make effort without losing peace of mind? Is there such a thing possible or not? And uh, the reason he started to uh, think in this way was when he was young uh, in Japanese society. We are so much influenced by Western uh, civilization. And for us Japanese, Western civilization is main point of Western civilization is make progress, make our life better by using science and technology and economy. But Uchamura said in, in the East, uh, at least in Japanese society, we for us, peace of mind is more important. So we, you know, for example, in about almost 300 years within Tokugawa period from 17th century to uh, 19th, you know, Japan, Japan was closed uh, for against the rest of the world. And uh, governed by only one government, Tokugawa shogunate government. And the uh, classes in the society is fixed. So uh, people who are born at a farmer's ha family needs to be farmer. Or, or a merchant, uh, children of merchant family needs to become a merchant. And uh, the f people who are born in a samurai family become samurai. So this uh, social class is fixed. That means there's no competition. If, we, if someone was born in family, samurai family, they can be samurai automatically. So there's no freedom of choice. But because of that, we had, there's no competition. Therefore, we had a peace of mind. And Buddhism taught how can we live without complaining about this uh, lack of freedom. But, but on the other side, we can enjoy peace of mind. That means this is, this is the only possible way of life for us. So we can somehow need to find how to enjoy our life on each uh, kind of a classes. Uh, but when Uchemaroshi was uh, a teenager, somehow uh, in Japanese society, these two uh, Japanese uh, traditional culture is still alive. And uh, Japanese people studied Western civilization. So he said, uh, by studying both and trying to find possible, find a way for uh, all human beings to find some way to these two sides are, what do you call, uh, included or integrated. Then he could find the uh, better history for hum all human beings. How can, so his koan, when he was young, is how we can integrate Western civilization of making progress and uh, Asian kind of a spiritual culture to be peaceful, to f accomplish a peace of mind together. 
to do so, he studied Western philosophy and uh, Christianity, and also he st uh, studied and practiced Buddhism. So, uh, from the starting point, uh, he didn't think, you know, traditional Japanese Buddhism is okay as it is, this is the best way of life. But he tried to find, how can I say, <clears throat> uh, one of the problem of the Japanese society until Meiji, until before we studied Western uh, civilization was, you know, for that 300, almost 300 years, uh, that population in Japan is the, almost the same. I think it's about uh, 30 million. That means uh, the way of agriculture or farming, I think this number of people is a kind of a limit to support, to survive. So uh, there's no development. So, you know, within this system, uh, instead of making development, uh, Japanese people make effort to, what is the word, to sophisticate what they are doing. So they, a Japanese culture become very kind of a uh, sophisticated and uh, what, is, what is the word, uh, aesthetic, beautiful, and s making simple and small. And that was a kind of a, still I think kind of a uh, feature or characteristic of Japanese culture. But uh, Japanese people after Meiji think if we don't study Western civilization, uh, Japan, we, uh, we lose our country, our nation, and become a, uh, uh, what is the word? Colony, colony of, of Western power. So somehow we had to study both. I mean, we studied Western civilization, but uh, what Uchamuro was feeling is we are losing peace of mind. So what he wanted to do in his lifetime was how can we integrate these two, uh, making hard to develop without losing peace of mind. I think that is uh, his, uh, in a sense, a koan from when he was a teenager. And he, this is a, what he's talking is uh, in this book, is a kind of conclusion or answer he found. So he know the problem of working hard to make progress and and there is also a problem if we don't work hard and just be there with peace of mind. So how can we make progress without losing peace of mind? That is what he wants to uh, discover. Is there such a, such a way of life? And uh, his answer is, uh, I think, a uh, out of a way practice to work hard for the sake of all beings, including ourselves. Is uh, such a way of life possible or not? And what he is saying here is if we only seek development or getting better or make our life uh, wealthier and uh, more comfortable and convenient. You know, our, our life becomes competition. We have to compete with others. And within a competition, uh, you know, uh, the always there are uh, 
fewer winner and much more loser. So naturally, our society become like a pyramid. You know, small number of people uh, kind of control uh, has power to control the greater number of people. And I think, and another problem is, you know, this is a power, but as a uh, wealth, it op become opposite. Small number of people own the most of the wealth. So uh, people in the uh, bottom <coughs> needs to uh, suffer. But uh, what he Uchamura is saying here is even the winners suffer. There's no actually there's no winners. Both are for both people winners and losers or successful or not successful. Uh, spiritually, they are they have both problems. That is. Uh, uh, what Uchamuro meant when he, he said competition is harmful to both uh, winner and loser because we in this uh, system we don't we cannot find a peace of mind. So uh, let me read uh, sentence by sentence in this paragraph. The flow of universal life is stif stifled by an attitude that set up this world as just a place to compete for survival. Compete for survival. Uh, <clears throat> in Japanese, which I'm going to use this expression, Seizon Kyoso. Kyo and So both mean competition. And Seizon, Se is to live and son needs to exist. And uh, this is a translation of survival. So this Seizon Kyoso is a translation of English expression, uh, struggle for survival, struggle for uh, existence. So in this in this structure, this this entire world becomes the world of competition, in which we have to fight or compete with others. Otherwise, we'll be uh, lose our life, and uh, <coughs> winners can be happy. Supposed to be. Uh, so on in which people merely rise and fall. That means uh, winners can be happy for a while, but uh, that is not the end of the story. But other people uh, want to take that power from this person. So this story group or competition has no end. You know, last week I talked about uh, the uh, Indian uh, society uh, at the time of Shakyamuni. They are really in this uh, situation. And uh, Shakyamuni was the prince of a small, uh, not so powerful kingdom. And his kingdom was uh, belongs to a larger power, larger uh, kingdom called Kosala. And Kosala's uh, king was Prasinajit. 
And another big power in his time was Magadha. And Magadha's king was Bimbisara. And then uh, somehow Buddha didn't want to participate this competition, this competitional comp uh, structure. So he left his home and tried to find uh, this is interesting. What he did after he left home is more is he stopped working. He gave up all the uh, power and wealth and uh, <coughs> and anything, and he became like a beggar. And he lived without working. He received food from uh, lay people. In a sense, that looks like a parasite. And not only Shakyamuni, but all Buddhist monks decided not to work, but uh, to live only with the donation or offering from lay people. So only, when we only see the food, you know, Buddhist monks is like a parasite. But somehow, uh, those monks can uh, offer dharma that is necessary for lay people. So here is a different kind of uh, mutualism out right there. Uh, lay people offer food to the monks, and monks offer dharma teaching. That is a, a mutualism. And uh, even those two kings of the two, you know, powerful kingdom became Buddha's student. And uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, those two most powerful people in the Indian world, uh, one of them, King Bimbisala of Magadha was killed by his son because his son uh, wanted to become a king. But somehow, uh, he, his son, I think, his son felt he was, uh, his father didn't like him. I don't, I forget exactly what was the situation between these two people. But somehow, uh, King Bimbisara was killed by his son. And another king, Prasenajit of Kosala, was kicked out by his son. And he, he went to Magadha, kind of escaped, and uh, he died there. So he was not killed, but somehow that is the reality of this uh, structure of, uh, what is the word, uh, struggle for survival. Even within the family, they need to fight or compete. So, oh, let me continue to read what Uchamurashi is saying. That is what Uchamura is saying. In the structure of competition, uh, no one can be complete winner forever. At least, uh, even they are not killed by their sons or, uh, or competitors, but when they face their death, they see, I think they see, they have to lose everything. Everything means all the wealth and position and power he had been uh, attaining, achieving by fighting. And when he died, he had to lose everything. Then I think it's kind of very natural to feel for himself that why, why I had to fight and compete other people for you know this uh, power or money or position 
I, ha I have to leave behind when we die. I think this is a very natural feeling. Uh, so often we are living within this structure. You know, we cannot find a absolute peace of mind. That is a problem of living only within this structure to make uh, uh, effort to reach the goal and gain something we want and we compete with others. Uh, because, you know, if we stop working hard, then other people gain what we want. So we also need to fight against ourselves. You know, satisfaction is a kind of enemy. If I'm satisfied, then I, that is the end of, you know, uh, working hard. Then other people will gain what they, he has. <coughs> So uh, within that kind of life, uh, you know, it's not possible to have an absolute peace of mind. Uh, next sentence. This attitude sees the law of survival of the, uh, of the fittest, survival of the fittest as absolute truth. So uh, this uh, within this idea of life, uh, the model is uh, what is called a law in the jungle. You know, stronger people uh, f fight against weaker and uh, weaker are eaten. Uh, so that is a law of survival of the fittest as absolute truth, if we think that is absolute truth and that is how we are existing in this world, then this world is, uh, is a place for competition and no one can be happy. And uh, absolute truth and within that framework manifest a spirit of comparing compare with others and rating who is better and competing with others and kicking, kick, kicking one another down the ladder. Winning and losing, that is all what we human beings do. If, if we think our life or, or this world is a world of competition, When we see that sooner or later we have to die, that means we have to lose everything, even ourselves, then no one can be really a winner or a loser if we think our life in this way. Uh, <clears throat> it sees winners degenerating in their own extravagance and loser going from frustration to neurosis. Uh, the, the word which for uh, frustration is uh, complex, complex in this case, inferiority complex. So uh, loser, when we, when we lose the competi com competition, we have I think it's natural to have a uh, inferiority complex that we are not uh, good like those winners. So we cannot have a uh, confidence. That means we can have a uh, uh, positive self-image. And uh, neurosis. I think you know what neurosis is. That means we don't know what to do. We cannot find the positive way of life. 
So both winners and loser this life uh, become suffering. People, finally he says, people with such an attitude end up unable to make their own flower blossom. So both winners and losers cannot bloom the flower of uh, life or flower of universal life because winners uh, become degenerate. I think winners or rich people in this in this world today, modern world today, are not really happy people because they already have everything they need. So it's kind of a difficult to find a motivation to do anything for their own spiritual uh, health. And uh, of course, the losers or poor people is also diff have difficult life. So no one can be winners or can live with peace of mind. We are always have something, uh, you know, some kind of ambition to become better, to go a higher position in the society. I think that is a kind of American dream. You know, everyone uh, with free, free competition. Everyone have a chance to become a winner. I think that is called American dream, but I think it's American illusion. No one, it's, it's really difficult to be, to be happy in such a, such a condition. Uh, so, uh, and they not go, uh, let's see, people with such an attitude end up unable to make their own flower blossoms. How can universal life bloom in this environment? That means, uh, what Ujjam Roshi is saying, or what Mahayana Buddhist is saying is, as I always say, we are living together with all beings and supporting each other. If we see that way, that is a uh, you know, first example of uh, symbiosis, then we can find a joy and we can find a, a joy in working hard, making, making effort to help others. And by helping others, we are also helped. That is one side. And another side is uh, competition, in which you know, all other people are uh, competitors or even enemies. Uh, so these two are the kind of model which I'm is talking about. So in the case of uh, first Bodhisattva way of life, we can have a, a peace of mind by being settled, settled peacefully here and now. And still we, make, we can make effort to, pro, to make progress for others, or for, not for only for others, but for the so-called universal life in which we are part of there. So that is how that is what Uchemurosh uh, discovered after he studied Western philosophy and Buddhism. And that is what he, he wished to share with us. Okay, this is what uh, I have to say this morning. Any question or comment, please? Um, so, 
This is uh, interesting because I had uh, I was with a friend earlier this week who's going through a lot of hard problems, and so I was talking to her like I knew if I started talking about Buddhism that mm -hmm. would alienate her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had no relation to it. So I. And so this is very a similar situations. Like first of all, um, I made some analogy which turned out to be uh, useful for her, which is talking about like life is a virtual reality game, mm -hmm. but it's a cool virtual reality game because there's infinite levels, and no matter uh, if we get to the next level, we're still mm -hmm. if then we're still agitated. So if we're bad at the game, then mm -hmm. we're agitated. If we're good at the game, then we're still agitated. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seemed to have um, some resonance except for the fact that you, know, you talk about the way out is the bodhisattva way and mm -hmm. at that point that's kind of where you i you know lost the ability to real connect with it you know because mm -hmm. for me like you know zazen would be the way of disconnecting myself from the console right yeah. disconnecting myself from the game right but um i don't know how really if you have any suggestions on how to be a bodhisattva presence to somebody for whom the language of buddhism might be alienated Yeah, uh, that is, I think that's the teaching of Bodhisattva vow, you know, uh, being uh, numberless to free, to free or save them or help them is first vow. And second is uh, delusion are uh, unexhaustible. We vow to end them. That means, uh, you know, the this world is a world of competition, I think, is a, is a delusion, illusion. Uh, you know, all those six types of relation are reality. So uh, if we think uh, we are all, only all supported each other, then that is another illusion. But seeing all those six, all those six or more kind of relations, uh, what can be a good model for us to live, I think is the point. So Buddhism doesn't teach other five are delusion only, you know, mutualism is reality, then that is another delusion, I think. But seeing all different kind of uh, relation among uh, living beings within uh, including human society. What is the best way, not the best way, but, but the healthy way of life is to, uh, as Uchamura said, to make effort. To make effort means to accomplish something. That means we have a direction to go and attain. But that is not only the purpose of our life, but living together with all beings in peace of mind is another side. How can we, these two sides together, integrate these two? Uh, I think to do so we need a kind of a sense of humor. <laughs> if we become solid from one side, then our life becomes competition. But if we, <coughs> we ignore this side, we become like a fool, foolish person who says everything is okay, even though you know there are so many problems we need to take care of. And on both sides are problems. So how can we uh, see both sides and uh, making effort without losing uh, peace of mind. Is such a way of life possible or not? I think uh, this is the answer which I'm not discovered, but still uh, answer is not, is not reality. You know, but he, his answer is this might be a possible better way of life for all human beings, but we have to make effort to live in that way. Uh, so uh, it's not to be a bodhisattva is not an easy way of life, I think. 
So we need to kind of uh, make effort to become free from our delusion and study the Dharma that is the third uh, valve. Uh, Dharma gates are boundless. We have to, not have to, but we wish, we vow to uh, enter them and we study the reality of life. And fourth is uh, Buddha's awakening. Buddha's way is uh, what is it? unsurpassable. That means beyond our reach. But somehow we vow to realize it. Means we our vow, our practice is to uh, take uh, even one step toward that direction. <coughs> Uh, I think so. This is according to Uchamrosh <coughs> and uh, according to my understanding <coughs> of what Uchamrosh and uh, Shakyamuni Buddha and this tradition uh, kind of make uh, propose to us to uh, live in a better or healthier way of life. Okay. Um, I was just curious. Jaku Niku Kyo Shoku. I think this is a translation of English expression. Mm. I think if you translate it back from Japanese. Uh, I'm sorry, Jaku Niku Kyo Shoku. Yeah, weaker, weaker people uh, meet for uh, stronger or stronger uh, eat. Actually, what we do, <laughs> we eat almost all, every, all kind of edible meat. So we are top of the uh, chain of food, and we don't think that is bad. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> Please. Uh, um, when you have time, sometime I would uh, like to hear more about what you include when you say uh, we need a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I think that's very significant, at least in my life and the people I see. Yeah. Very important, and so, but I don't expect you to do too much with it, but please, uh, some time. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, many of them must have had a very good sense of humor like Joshu. <laughs> that means if we become too serious to, to go either side, we have a problem. Somehow we need to both. That means we need a kind of a, what is the word, compliment. So uh, even, I, you know, each, each one of us has a kind of a tendency to go this side or that side, but uh, by, uh, how can I say, joking, <laughs> joking, we can be free from our kind of uh, clinging to this side or that side. That is, I think, f uh, the meaning of sense of humor in Zen practice. That means uh, in Zen or Buddh Mahayana Buddhism, there are two kind of uh, uh, side of reality. One is uh, emptiness and another is the form. And Mah Buddhism, the Heart Sutra said, form is emptiness and emptiness is the form. Uh, if we don't have a sense of humor, uh, you know, 
we cannot really understand. <laughs> this is a kind of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we are serious about a logical way of thinking, you know, this is a very difficult logic to accept. So we have to uh, laugh. Okay. <laughs> Please. Uh, taking uh, Uchiyama's structure of this mm -hmm. paragraph, I, would it be fair to say that uh, uh, the, the Bodhisattva way mm -hmm. is the blooming of universal life? Yeah. And by blooming our own unique flower, we can uh, live or we can f um, bloom, the uh, f bloom the flower of universal life. So to be, uh, to be ourselves is to be a healthy part of this universal life. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm.